We're going to do some more rope sight exercises today and I've got a feeling that last video that I did about find the last bell down when you're covering to Stedman doubles was a little bit um, possibly a bit complicated for people if they haven't done any rope sight before. So this is aimed at real you know beginning to, to learn how to do rope sight but very very useful anyway for somebody who has started to learn rope sight but is feeling that they can't quite see the bells, they can't quite see the order. So we're going to go fairly simple. We're going to go to the top, open file. We're going to select four bell. And this then means that we've only got four bells to look at to develop our rope sight. And this can be extended to six bells, eight bells, 10 bells, 12 bells, whatever, um, at your leisure when you are ready and you feel comfortable with each number before increasing. The other thing is, when we start ringing, um, I'll double click on four to make sure that it's in numerical order again. So when you start ringing, you can see at the bottom of the screen, um, the order of the bells, one, two, three, four. And also at the right hand side, it prints out um, a running sort of commentary, you know, telling you which bells first and which bells last. So in this exercise of rope sight, we don't want that because we will then give the game away. So we need to go up to view and de-tick the blue line, and that disappears, and then untick the striking display as well. So therefore we are just totally relying on the ropes. And so what is the last bell down? And what is the first bell to ring? How do you know, out of these four, which bell is going to ring first? So what you do is you look at when they catch the semi. So at the moment, in rounds, the treble is leading. So you can see that the treble is catching the semi first. What I've just done there was I didn't click on the top um, start stop ringing. I clicked escape on my keyboard twice and that actually stops the ringing um, immediately. Thanks to Phil for that. So you double click on escape, double press escape to stop the ringing immediately. That's sometimes really useful so that you don't have to move your mouse up to the top or down here. So you can see that number one was catching a Sally first, and then you could see number two was catching, and then number three, and then number four. So now we're going to put them in a different order. And the best way to do this is to go to options at the top, ringing options, turn on manual call changes, click OK. And we're not going to really pay much attention to what order we want the bells in. So we're going to randomly click on different ringers to change the places. And when we're happy, I'll then pause it at the top. Two, two, three. One, two, three, three, two, one, two, two, four, three, two, four, one, two, three, three, two, four, one, two, four. So as soon as you notice that they're sufficiently muddled up and they're not in any form of rounds, then you can click pause at the top. So then we're going to concentrate on looking across, looking at these four bells, who catches a Sally first? And if that was a bit too fast for you, just increase the peel time. So I'm going to increase it to 3 hours 15 because that's a little bit more comfortable to see. You can go slower or faster, however much you want. Here we go again. So hopefully you could see that number four was catching the Sally before any of the others. Sometimes it's difficult to see, you know, that, for instance, number three might have catched the Sally and then the others are sort of mid 
midway, but that means that actually three would be the last bell. So you have to look for all of them to have the sallies up in the air and then see which one comes down the first. So it's it's best to not start looking straight away once you start ringing because it could be misleading. It might look like that person is, is, is catching the sally first. So it was number four. Now, to look for the bell in second place, we have to look at number four. When she's just catching the sally, look across at these three bells. Which person is catching the sally the next? Now, in normal ringing, um, you would be able to see who's following number four very easily because they'll be looking at her. So that gives you a clue. But here you've got uh, pure rope sights just looking at where the sally comes down. So here we go. And hopefully you, you could see that it was actually the one that was following the four. You can also hear it as well because you're hearing the lowest sound, dong, and then the highest sound, dong. So sometimes it's really useful to use your ears as well to know who's following who. So we've got the order four, one. Then whoever's following four, um, who's following one, it's going to be one of these two. It's going to be either two or three. So let's have a look. And so it was a three. So therefore, number two is the last bell down, the last bell to ring. So the order is four, one, three, two. And hopefully now, if I click on view and we get the striking display, you can then check your answer. So look down here to see whether it's four, one, three, two. And it is. Sometimes we've got numbers appearing here. I don't know why. It's possibly because I've been pausing it and they're in mid um, ringing. So just wait till it settles down and you should see the, the numbers above these um, dashes. And that's the correct order there. So just wait for it to settle down. So then the next thing is to go on to six and then go on to eight. Speed it up maybe and see if you can get the rope sight uh, from, from the hand stroke point of view. So I'm just talking about catching the sally. Um, so that's that's rope sights in one stroke, catching the sally. We have to learn rope sights where you can see who's um, got their hands up in the air at backstroke first, but that's for next video.